is a record deck that needs fixing. It's a Technics SL10. It's a linear tracking, which means that the arm moves in straight across like that on a rack on a drive system. Uh, the SL10 was part of a series of Technics made. They made a 1, a 5, a 7, a 10, a 15. Uh, all of them brilliant. Uh, the 10 especially had a moving coil MC cartridge. All the others had uh, MM moving magnet. Uh, because it had that um, cartridge, it's got an extra preamp inside because of the low signal out of these to boost the signal up. And this particular one has um, a switch in the back. If you change this, it's a P-mount, so it's very easy to change in those days. You could buy these, and they're just very easy to swap. If you put a MM one in, moving magnet, with a higher output, there's a little button in the back. You can switch the preamp on and off. Anyway, this one has the original cartridge Technics in there, the 310 MC, which is the one it came with. Um, but <laughs> I've already had a look. This one doesn't have a stylus in it, so that's a lot of use. Um, I put a record in and just show you. Uh, it's, it's in pretty good condition. They're heavy, these things as well. They're uh, nicely made with sprung feet and everything. Uh, turn it on. There's a red light glows on the strobe there for uh, checking the speed when it's rotating. There's a red position indicator there, which uh, helps you position it on the record. The SL15, the top of the range, had um, a very nice mechanism where it would actually measure all the tracks on the LP and then you could select them from a, a number pad. But this one doesn't have that. On the front you've got a light for the speed. Um, now uh, the problem with this is uh, I'll show you the um, this will should track in across the record, but it doesn't. Uh, when you when you press start, it starts going around, which is a good sign. And this will lower down onto the record, but it stays there. If you if we lift it up again with the cueing device, comes up. You should be able to move this across with this button here. You see the lights come on, but it's not moving at all, and the these buttons move it back that way and it also stops it when it gets to the end but it seems to be stuck at the end um, there's three reasons why it could be stuck at the end uh, normally the simple ones are probably the, why it is um, it goes along on these rails and it's probably jammed somehow on that rail the, another for there is a drive cord that drives from the motor that moves us along that could be jammed or broken uh, I think that's pretty unlikely um, and the third option is the electronics has gone wrong the electronics is very very reliable in these things um, but could still be a problem but it's almost certainly I would think be jammed um, the other thing is with this this lovely cartridge, which apparently sounded fantastic when it was when they work. This one doesn't have a stylus in it. <laughs> you can't get stylus for them, a replacement stylus apparently. So unfortunately, that probably have to be swapped out for a P mount. But you can buy P mounts. P mount uh, cartridges are brilliant design by the Japanese where lots of manufacturers could make these cartridges. They just plug in. There's a little screw in the side that holds it in place. They all weighed the same. They all tracked at the same weight. All the styluses were in the same position. So you could swap between lots of different makes from cheap to expensive. You just uh, swap them over. There was no setting up, no, no difficulty in changing them at all. Now, uh, this one, the um, lid is held nicely uh, some of them, like the SL7, has a Perspex uh, catches on the side and they snap off. Which is, This one is more secure. There's a button on each side and it releases the whole lid up. 
Now what's brilliant about these Technics and some other makes is that all the mechanism is in the lid, including the cartridge uh, drive mechanism and this um, this puck or whatever you want to call it, which presses down on the record and holds it in place. Uh, two two things that does. One, it, it flattens out any warp records, which is brilliant. And uh, secondly, you can actually play these these um, vertically, uh, even upside down. I'm told, um, so they could be put on uh, display racks and lifted up, and this stopped the record falling off. Some people take these off. Um, they say it improves the sound, but I don't think I'm going to bother doing that. There's the cartridge inside. Uh, I don't know how it, how it lost its stylus, who knows. Um, but anyway, there's a screw on the side for taking it out and replacing it. And there's some adjustments in here for playing weight down there. There's a little locking thing there that holds this arm in place. Another one with this, uh, the SL10. You can turn the disc to clean it while it's open. You couldn't do that with the SL7 because it wouldn't turn unless the lid was shut. With this one, you've got um, this nice button, you press it and the disc goes around, so you can then use your cloth or whatever to clean it. It's completely automatic, though you can force it onto 33 or 45. I'll just take this off. These little uh, holes here, lights shine up through these, these little holes when it's on there. You can see the light shines through there. And it reflects back off the record, and it can tell whether it, what size the record is. So it can automatically set the um, needle down on a 12, 10, or 7 inch. Also, if you have a record, a single, that uh, has the middle punched out, this has um, a pop up center for um, records with no centers, and it's brilliant. Uh, so, Two things, unfortunately I've got enough to change that, but the main thing first is to get it working. Uh, this is the, um, this here, I'm feeling it now, and it's got some rather sticky grease on it. Uh, I'm pretty sure that has jammed it somehow. Now there's lots of, in, lots of um, info available on these online. You can get the complete um, service documents for free online telling you all about adjustments, how to take it apart and everything. And there's the original brochures telling you how wonderful the uh, moving coil cartridge was. Unfortunately our wonderful one is no longer. There's nice pictures of the inside. Apparently these are very good. People like these. People who are very fussy like the sound that comes out of them. I've got an SL7, that sounds brilliant. Uh, very well made, very small, super small. Anyway, I'll, uh, I'll do some work on this, see if I can get it to work and uh, continue the video then. Well, I've just taken the uh, cartridge out. It's, um, Stylus isn't uh, replaceable in this. Looks like it was permanently uh, fixed in. It seems to have been sheared off right at the right at the where it goes into the body. Um, so that is, uh, I assume, that is scrap. Anyway, I've turned the table over here so we can look inside. Um, looking at this, I don't know whether all this grease on here was somebody trying to make it work and covered it in grease, but it's got an awful lot of um, very, very black sticky <laughs> grease on there. As far as I know, there should be no grease on there. This should be self-lubricating uh, with the plastic on this rod. So I'm going to have to get all that off. I'll try um, a fairly mild uh, isopropyl 
alcohol first so that it doesn't attack any of the plastic and if that is not enough I'll um might have to find something a bit more aggressive but I, I want to be careful I don't want to damage any um, especially this uh, clear perspex here so I'll try and clean that up I've taken the inner cowl in off inside the lid it's here it's held on with about 12 uh, various screws and a little clip uh, here which goes in a a slot in there and you have to make sure you just get it off of there otherwise you can't pull it off now this is the back of the, the puck here it's got um, a ball bearing in it uh, and that grease has gone a bit hard as well so I need to clean and grease that and that ball bearing presses on a hard surface just here and it's possibly why some people actually take this puck off they unscrew it take it off because um, that could give a little bit of noise or rumble maybe um, so uh, it's possibly why some people take it off um, so once that's off it exposes the um, the linear track in uh, the rods here the guide rods and everything I've still got to clean the quite a bit of grease off there and then inside uh, you can see um, here is a pulley with the drive belt which it seems to be I don't know what it's made of it looks like wire uh, I check that so it's not broken or anything it's got a bit of grease all over it so I'll clean that as well I think and then down here uh, you, you uh, just one screw holds this circuit board on you just loosen it so you can pull it away and you can see um, in there the white uh, gears which uh, is connected to the drive um, belt or wire and that's a worm gear and it comes off of down here a little motor and it's got um, a little rubber belt on it now that that belt is very slack I don't know if it should be that slack anyway once I get it going uh, I can see where it slips there's the worm gear in there um, so I'll clean up all the grease and uh, check the tension on this belt, I think. And then I can power it up and see where it's slipping. Um, this is this obviously moves backwards and forwards on these rails. This is um, uh, the balance arm. And... Um, Hopefully that part's gonna be working once I've cleaned it up. There's a couple of there's a little um switch here, limit switch. I check that, make sure it's working. It's very easy to check with a meter. Um otherwise everything uh, still looks okay. To get all that sticky um grease off there I had to go quite aggressive. I used this um brake cleaner uh, put it on uh, here and on this cloth and just keep on wiping it until it feels nice and slippery now um, I cleaned it off there as well and before I can test it um, I'll have to put the circuit board back on because down there is a wheel that's the encoder wheel um, I'll just turn it you can see it possibly turning um, it's going round in, and that goes round between uh, a send and receive little block on the circuit board. It's got a slot in it, uh, so that has to be um, fitted back over the wheel, uh, so it knows how fast it's going. Um, I'll just screw that in and see if we can get it moving. Wind it along here. and then I'll wind it along a bit and when it goes it will go back now but it doesn't go all the way so it looks like when it was all the way to the right hand side down here um, this, the electronics uh, got confused I think because I've wound it I've wound it down quite a way 
Uh, I turn it on. Uh, there are the lights. You have to put a disc on it, and there it goes. Now it gets to that position there. Now is that at the start of the record? Let's have a look. Um, could be, but then if we press start, it, oh, it started working now. I've set it to forty-five. Um, It's winding back and forwards now. Let's try that again. Uh, press start. And it winds. Let's see if we can stop it. Press the queuing button, it stopped. Let's see if we can move it that way. moving hmm move it slowly with a light press just one little light comes on press it harder and it speeds up the two lights on try the other way yeah press it harder hmm seems to have started working now so um when I open it up, it should stop and go back. Hmm, that's interesting. So I put the cartridge in and put an old record on. Just um, show you uh, it working. Uh, we press start. It's gone down onto the record. Okay, it's working, but it seems to be working all right. I put a 45 in, it's on auto, so it shows 33, so it should switch to 45. I'll just hold the lid down, um, press start. Off it goes. The speed is switched to 45 now. Goes onto the record. Seems to be okay. Let's lift it up. See if it move in. And it does move in. Lower it down. Lift it up. It goes back. Goes forward. And uh, let's lower it on the inner groove. There it goes. And it got to the end of the record. Time to reassemble. Uh, put the cowling back on the inside. I put some very, very uh, low uh, friction uh, grease just on the for the ball. Uh, wind the arm along a bit um, with this so that the cowling can go down the side. Uh, make sure you've done up the screw. Uh, this this little uh, cover for the wiring. Make sure it's in the in position because the cowling will go around that. Um, you release the stay by carefully pulling it, and it comes out. Just snaps out so that it goes. You can fit it through the groove on the cowling. Um, everything else. Uh, looks so good, good. So uh, fit the cowl in on and um, check it out. Okay, all the twelve screws are back in the correct order. Just remember that that white uh, switch has to go in first. If you try and put the cover on without putting that through the slot, you'll never get the cover on. And also, this has to go through the slot. So um, that stay, if you just put it in there, will just snap into position. And uh, I just remove, take the lock off there. Get that back. Make sure that's in the centre. Uh, let's turn it on, and that should move 
back, which it does. So now it's just a matter of um, the lights are on nicely. Uh, I'll put a record on and uh, see if it uh, behaves itself. Technics SL10 all back together again. I've cleaned it up the best I can. Um, I've uh, put a Technics P202C P mount which I had in there. The original was um, broken. Uh, let's just try a bit of um, Best of Julie London. Uh, just show it in operation. We press, uh, it's obviously switched on, shows a light there. Uh, the strobe light's on, and there's a light uh, shines across the disc so you can see illuminates the grooves. Uh, just press start. I'll just pay a bit and then move it on. Lift the arm and move it slowly. One uh, light comes on or quickly. You can move it back. Uh, one light or two lights. And then uh, you can lower it, lower it down. The light goes out inside when it's on the disc. It's June in January because I'm in love. And lift it up, uh, and then if you open it while well, um, the arm is not at the zero position. Uh, just see if I can open it with one hand. It will uh, track back. And uh, you've got this the button if you want to put your record uh, brush on it while you're cleaning it. The speed selector. You can turn it on and off. Um, so it's all working good except for it's only got a, a Mem M moving magnet uh, cartridge in it now, not the original, but it sounds good and it all works. So, um, so it's a really nice, uh, very nice player.